welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? Uh, German Fest beer. Mm. Today we're going to be bringing to you 1993's Ghost in the Machine. It is directed by Rachel Talali. Tamali? <laughs> Tamali! She directed another really cheesy 90s horror movie, and that is Freddy's Dead. <laughs> the movie stars Karen Allen, and she's in some very classic 80s movies, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and she's also in the Carpenter classic Starman. Mm -hmm. Along with her is Chris Mulkey, and he's in tons and tons of stuff. One of the bigger movies he's in would be Cloverfield. Will Horniff is in this. He's not in much at all, but one horror movie he's in is the 1990s miniseries made for TV, The Shining. He plays Tony. <laughs> and lastly, we'll have to mention, we have to mention, yeah. Brandon Quinton Adams. And he is in one of our favorite movies of all time, People Under the Stairs. The movie starts off this guy sort of sitting in his car and he's casing out this house. And we get introduced to the main character, Josh. We learn that the dad's not in the picture. Back to the house where the guy was sitting outside casing it out, but now they sort of go through the house and they, they pan through. Some nice dinner, yeah. some nice home cooked <laughs> meal sitting on the table. It shows the family and they're all dead. And it turns out that this man is a serial killer and he's coined the address book killer. He steals address books and he goes in order. Terry and Josh go to this computer software store. Computer universe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so 90s. Terry's looking for software that can help her digitize her address book. There's some scanner thing yeah. that you have to scan and then it shows on the computer and it moves the addresses yeah. over into like some filing system yeah. on <laughs> <Some> the... hokey <laughs> 90s software that never really existed. <laughs> and it's kind of useless yeah. too. Here's your address book and then on your computer screen it's just a picture of that. <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is. Like, isn't it more convenient to have the book with you? I guess so. I, I don't know. In the 90s, yeah, oh, I need an address. I gotta go upstairs, turn on the computer, wait 20 <laughs> minutes for the fucking thing to boot, <laughs> as opposed to, oh, there it is. Yeah, and 1993, yeah. no less. You have to do all that shit to <laughs> the DOS. When they leave, she f forgets her address book. It just so happens that this address book serial killer is working at that very computer store and he ends up taking her address book. He's so happy, I guess, that he starts driving in the rain <laughs> like a complete fucking asshole, veering in and out of traffic all super fast and <laughs> going like driving head on with like all these trucks and everything. Like, why? I don't know. <laughs> I guess he's really excited to get to that next kill. He ends up rolling the car and it starts to go down like this embankment. He's all laughing, <laughs> <laughs> going through some cemetery. Yeah, they're hitting all these tombstones. And... <laughs> <laughs> the paramedics arrive on scene all the way to the hospital. <laughs> he gets put into one of those MRI scanning machines and while he's in there, there's a power surge, I guess from the storm or whatever. <laughs> He dies, but his, like, soul or, like, his consciousness g gets, like, uploaded to, <laughs> to the, like, the main <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Through the lines. Yeah. <laughs> we also get introduced to Bram, and he's a master hacker. He's also friends with a giant elephant. <laughs> We see Bram's car outside in the rain too, his convertible with the t with the roof up, <laughs> and all his stuff in the back, and his shitty boss too, with some toupee. So all this strange stuff starts happening to Terry. She goes to the bank, finds out that all of her funds have been wiped, and then now she no longer has access to her accounts. So Bram, over at DataNet, notices that a hacker is trying to get into all these computers and these files. Terry's info starts popping up. Now the address book killer has started going through her address book and making the kill. Poor old guy. <laughs> Heat himself up a TV dinner. <laughs> yeah. The address book killer comes through the power lines and like the door explodes <laughs> open. 
<laughs> so then all the radiation waves are just kind of being emitted into the kitchen. Starts all bubbling up. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just waiting for him to explode. The guy's head's gonna yeah. blow up. Then he slips on some mustard <laughs> and then cracks his head on the table counter. <laughs> They show his blood all boiling, yeah. too. He actually gets into the VCR and <laughs> shoots out a VHS tape and spooks the dog. And the dog runs out of the house and actually ends up drowning in the pool. Yeah. Josh comes home and finds the dog dead in the pool and jumps in, possesses the pool cover, <laughs> <laughs> and the pool cover starts coming over the pool and Josh has to swim and get out of the pool before he gets trapped. The next guy on Terry's address book works at a car manufacturing plant and they're testing to make sure the car is meeting safety and waiting for the guy to get it. He's looking under the car and like, okay, when yeah. when is he going to get run over or something? Nothing's happening. And he gets in the car and it goes full speed and hits the wall mm -hmm. and he survives. Yeah. Like, well, when's this guy going to fucking get it, you know? Yeah. Then he goes to the bathroom and washes hands, goes to the dryer, hits the button, and <laughs> boom! All this fire comes out of the, the hand dryer. The guy just gets cooked gets alive. Cooked up. <laughs> Josh goes to his buddy's place. A little embarrassed, but there's a babysitter yeah, there. Yeah, of for course. Him. They're gathering money. They're trying yeah. to get all this money together so they can pay her to. <laughs> Flash a little bit. Ooh! Ooh! She ripped him off! Yeah, yeah, that's like, like 30 bucks in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Go to a pool and see that. <laughs> Address book killer gets into this house. The babysitter's sitting there reading, watching in living color. The dishwasher starts getting all haywire and bubbling, <laughs> and the door comes open, and all the suds come out and she steps in it and gets electrocuted to yeah. death. Josh realizes the deaths are happening in the same order as in his mom's address book. The address book killer is continuing his work even though he's dead. They assume he is possessed <laughs> the internet with the help of Bram, the ex-computer hacker. They're gonna devise a plan to somehow capture and kill again. <laughs> yeah. The so Address good. Book Killer. If you want to find out what happens, keep watching the movie Ghost in the Machine. This movie is so fun. Even though there's a lot going on in the movie, things do connect pretty well for the yeah. type of movie that it is. The best thing about this movie really is the kills. Yeah. You told me to watch it. You kept messaging me, have you got to the first kill yet? I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I haven't got there yet. He's like, oh, you're going to love it. I'm like, okay, I guess it'll be good, right? And that's an understatement. It wasn't good. It was <laughs> fucking great. I hadn't laughed that hard in probably like a year. There's so many layers to that kill. Yeah. For one thing, he starts bubbling up and he's noticing all this shit happening. Why don't you just leave? Yeah. Like he just stays there. Then on top of that, he slips and hits his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's another cool thing about most of the kills in this movie is the misdirection in them. Right. Where they're kind of leading you where a kill is going to happen this way and it doesn't. So you're always waiting for this payoff and you get the payoff, but it doesn't happen the way that they lead you to believe it's going to happen. And the build-up to all mm -hmm. of the deaths are really good, too. Yeah. The effects are great. 1993, so it's still before CGI has taken off. Yeah, there's the bad you know. computer effects where they're showing him going through the lines, but mm -hmm. the practical effects are good. Yeah. yeah, like just a 90s time capsule. It's probably the most it's... 90s thing I've ever watched. It's almost stereotypical 90s, but they're not trying. Yeah. That's just how it was. They even <laughs> they even kind of poke fun at some things, like the, the grandma says to Terry, mm -hmm. I'll buy him some pants that fit. Yeah, because everything had to be baggy. Yeah. And, uh, and when he tries to impress the babysitter and he's trying to look even more 90s <laughs> by tucking his shirt into his boxers and pulling his boxers out of his pants. Like, yeah. It's almost a satire of itself, you know? The technology of the day, too, oh, yeah. right? I mean, that's like what the movie's about. It wasn't like a user-friendly internet yeah, or no, anything. No. There was no such thing. You had to actually 
read books and (laughs) get programs at the store and shit. You have to be a genius just to get your internet up and running. To get the IP address to your fucking internet. Yeah, it took forever. The ideas behind this movie for seeing what we're going through today, though. A lot of infiltration into our lives, right? Big Brother can see everything in our lives, right? And it's it's kind of neat that way. Like, they really saw the future. If you're in the mood for a fun movie, great kills, it's pretty innocent. It doesn't take itself too seriously, yeah, which is great. Yeah, that's part of it too, right? If you're going to go with this absurd, you can't take yourself seriously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, if you like old school 90s phony computer science movies. Like the net? Yeah. <laughs> but with a big horror twist and lots of fun kills yeah. you gotta check out Ghost in the Machine and it's just gonna be a big huge time travel back to 1993 <laughs> and before we all kept drinking <laughs>